Okay, so lesson seven builds on lesson six. But before we do that, the warm up for six, or sorry, the warm up for seven is nothing new. We've already done this. Remember, when you combine like terms and make an, a new expression, that new expression that you've come up with after you've combined the terms should be equivalent to the expression before you combine the terms. The only way to prove that is by substituting values for the variables and seeing if you get the answer for both, the original expression and the new combined expression. So that's what the warm-up is going to show you. So we have the expression 5x times 3n. Nothing new to what you've already done. Combine like terms and what do you come up with? Raise your hand. 5x times 3n. How do you combine it? And what does it become, Nora? Does everybody agree? 15xn, right? No different from what we did in lesson 6. We have our coefficient. We'll multiply that first. 5 times 3 is 15. x times n is xn. And you wind up with that as the new expression. To prove that 5x times 3n is an equivalent expression for 15xn, we're going to use substitution. Here's the original expression. And they let us choose our own variables. Now, when you get to choose your own variables, don't be overly crafty. Work smarter, not harder. Keep it simple, stupid. OK? The KISS method. Keep it simple, stupid. We don't like one, because sometimes one can be a little misleading. Two and three are our best friends. If we have to choose a third variable or a third value, two, three, four. So choose two for x, and n will be three. And we're going to substitute it in. X was what value again? Are you okay with using parentheses? You'll see it more and more. Three times n is now what? Evaluate it. Raise your hand when you have an answer. Francesca, what did you get? Everybody get 90? Circle it. What should you get if you substitute the same values for x and n in the new expression? What should you get? What should you get without even doing the math yet? Francesca, you should get 90 because we understand this expression and this expression are supposed to be equivalent. How do you prove that? By actually substituting values in. You should get 90. So let's do it. What was the value for x? Because the, the values can't change. If you choose 2 and 3, they've got to be 2 and 3 for your x and n, respectively, for this. So now I have 15 times 2 times 3. It works out. 15 times 2. I'll help you out. 15 times 2 is 30. 30 times 3 is, it works out. Now we've proven that 5x times 3n is equivalent for 2, 15x and n. The difference being is that we've combined like terms to make it even smaller when we created 15xn. OK? All right, let's go to example or number, number 2 in the uh, warm up. 10n times 2i times 3f. Combine like terms like you've been doing. What do you get? Jack Freddy. He's good, 60NYF, but we got to still prove it. All right, so 2, should, we should make 2 what value? Or make n what value? I kind of gave it away. 2. Y should be, and unfortunately we need a third, we should make it 4. Keep it simple. Don't get crazy 9, 10, 11, 13. It's going to make the numbers huge. You'll see when you do 2, 3, 4, there'll still be some time. You, it, it gets pretty big even with 2, 3, 4. Okay, so substitute in 2, 4, n. Oops times 2, 
value for y is 2 times 3. And the value for f, okay. Let's do this one together because this one, as you'll see, you'll get to a point where you may have to do some math off to the side. 10 times 2. 2 times 3 is 6. 3 times 4 is 12. I know I can do this. 12 times, 6 times 12 is 72. 20 times 72, you might have to work towards off to the side. Jack, talk to me. Talk to me. Where'd you get lost? You good? Okay. So I need somebody to work 22, to 20 times 72. What'd you get, boo? Yeah, it's 1,440. So I'm going to ask you guys the same question as I asked in example one. 60 NYF should get me the same number as this. So what should I get if, in fact, 60 NYF is equivalent to 10N times 2Y times 3F? What should I get if I substitute? Sean. Why not? Yeah, but our, but, our, but our goal, our goal is just to simply prove that the two expressions are equivalent. So why, why make it harder on ourselves in, in that instance? We want to just prove that the two expressions are equivalent, so work smarter, not harder. Keep the numbers manageable so you can reasonably do them in your head. But getting back to my question, 60 NYF, after I substitute in and I do the multiplication, what should I get? Raise your hand, Nora. I should get 1,440. So write the new expression 60 NYF. N was what value again? Yes, times 3, times 4. Go ahead, work it. Did you get the same number? Okay, good. All right, one more to do together. 3n times 6n times 2. Crunch it. What do you get, Paul? You want me to go back? Right. There's no way to solve an expression unless given a value for the variable. Seven. Okay. Does that answer your question? Okay. Okay. All right. Let's smash 3n times 6n times 2. J. Okay. 36 n, but this, I don't want you to say n2. There's a way you got to n squared or n to the second power is good. Okay, let's prove it. We only need to choose one variable, thank goodness. Two for n always. Sub it in. Let's do it together. Three times two. You can call out now if you want. I'll let you know. Six times two, everybody. 6 times 12, everybody. And can you do 72 times 2 in your head? Yes, it's 144. Circle that. Okay, what's the new expression? What did we, what did we create? Somebody I haven't heard from. Brody. What should I get after substitution? Okay, let's see if it works. Now 
I got to kind of follow the rules of PEMDAS here a little bit. Got to do this first. I got to knock out that exponent. So uh, 2 squared is what? Thirty-six times four. Yep, it worked. Okay. You ready to go to the actual nuts and bolts of lesson seven? All right. There's no keys. Okay. So just wait. All right. So now what we're going to do is combine what we've learned in lesson six and apply it to area and perimeter. It's kind of what the advanced kids did in the middle of lesson six. So they had a sneak preview um, in lesson six. Who remembers when you do area, how would you figure out the area of a rectangle without even looking at these numbers? Usually the formula for the area of a rectangle is what, Noah? Le length times width, longer side times shorter side. So now, look at this. Check this out. They're not giving you numbers for length and width. They're giving you algebraic terms. OK, so now, if this is my longer side, and I'll make this the L, and this is my shorter side, and I'll make that the W, the two sides that have to be multiplied together is length times width, which I know you're not supposed to use capital letters, but I am in this case because I don't want them to be confused for the measurements of the sides, which are already in lowercase variables. But in this instance, we don't have numbers for length. We have algebraic terms or algebraic expressions. So what's the length of this rectangle? This time I do need you to raise your hand. Four. It's not three. Three n. And what's the width? Sarah, 12y. So if you're telling me it's the long side times the shorter side, wouldn't that be then 3n, longer side, times 12y? Yes? However, we're going to do what we did in lesson six, and I want you to combine like terms. So. How would I rewrite this as a new expression with as fewest numbers and symbols as possible? Eric. 12 times 3. Right? 3 times 12 is not 30. Yes, 36NY. We have to prove it. We have to prove that 36NY is the same as 3n times 12y. What are we choosing for 2? What are we choosing for n? What are we choosing for y? They always think small, right? So here's what we do. Pick a number for each. We're going to do n is 2 and y is 3. Now watch this. What's up, Norm? Oh, you know what you, you, you do? You raise a fair point. You're right. You technically, you're right. I should probably choose a larger number. I should probably reverse it. It still wouldn't work, right? You're, you, I know what she's saying. In reality, when you choose the numbers, it's got to still be believable. So why don't we do this? Let me backtrack and go with numbers that after we substitute it in, it'll be somewhat believable. I think... All right, let's, let's do n is 1 and y is 5. That'll somewhat work. Okay, length time. Yes, 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 yes. 5 and 1, how's that? Okay, just so we can make it believable. Okay, so um, let's do this one first. 36ny. Now it becomes 36 times 5 times 1. Now we got to deal with a larger number, but can you do it? Yep. 
You got an answer, Francesco? 180. Okay, watch what I'm going to do. I'm going to go back to this. And I need some help because I can't see the bottom. But what was the value for N? See what I did there? I'm actually going to put the measurements of each side, which is, okay, so that, that's going to work out. And then 12 times 1, right? And this becomes 12. Do 15 times 12, what should you get? See if it works out, 15 times 12. We have, we have one more example we'll do, and then I think we're going to be out of time, and then we'll just pick it up on Monday. Okay, volume. Who remembers the formula for the volume of a prism? Sarah. Length times width times height, right? So we'll call this the L. We'll call this the W. Uh, and this would be the height. Let me rewrite that better. So it's length, I'll do it in capital letters, times width times height. Okay, what's the length of this prism? You can call this out if you want. Yes. What's the width? And the height. Okay, so technically if you multiply them all together, you get 3y squared times 2n times 3y squared, right? All right, crunch it. Yes. Okay, go, crunch it. Okay, so raise your hand and what'd you get? Hayden. Almost. 12y, but not 12y squared. Nope. I agree with the n. The n's fine. But you, th there's a problem with your exponent for y. Abby? How many y's are there? See, this is what I mean. It helps to expand it. If you get hung up, right, look, it's 3 times y times y times 2 times n times 2 times y. I have a y, a y, and a y to make y cubed. I, don't, I thought I heard 2, or I thought, oh, you know what, cubed and 2 sounded the same, that's why. Okay. So now they even tell us in step 5 what values to choose for the variables because even the, var the numbers 2 and 3 can make this unbearable to work with. So now we're going to take this expression, or let's go back to the original prism. What value is it for y? I need help, is that right? Because I can't see it. What was it for n? No, no, no. 1, right? What was it for y again? It tells you. It tells you at the bottom what to choose. Okay. What's 3 times 2 squared? Okay. What's 2 times 1? What's 2 times... Okay, so the numbers we have to multiply, and I need you to do this, is 12 times 2 times 4. And get me an answer. Go, boo. Everybody get 96? 96 what units, though? It's not area, and it's not perimeter, it's, it's, it's volume. What are the units for volume, do you remember? Not square units, cubic units. Okay, so now I'm going to take my combined expression. What should I get after substitution? Okay, 
value for y was 2. Value for n was 1. Let's do this. I'll even expand it out so you can see it a little bit better. What do you do first? 2 to the 3rd, everybody. Mm, you fell into a trap. 12 times 8. Hey, look at that. It works. I can tell by the glazed look on your eyes, you are ready for a weekend. To be continued on Monday.